Welcome back to our final uh, conversation of the 2018 Golf Industry Show, GCSA TV live from the show here in San Antonio, Texas, brought to you by Lebanon Turf, and I couldn't think, in fact, I did think of the best way to add, end the two days of live television here at the show in the great venue that we've been provided here that we learned about earlier by my friend, superintendent and GM of Fox Meadow Golf Club, Paul McCormick, known to the, the loyal followers of turfnet.com as the mindful superintendent, Paul. Welcome to the show. It's my doing, I got to say, and sort of bringing you because I feel so strongly, as we've heard from other people on this stage, especially Syngenta recently with their interest in well-being. It was funny what happened today, Paul. We'll start out with this very simple way that you and I just talked about it. I was talking with these folks. They were talking about wellness, and they said, we need better work-life balance. What do you think? I think we just need a better life. I just <laughs> balance. Just balance in general. Yeah, a better, I, I, more I think, balance. And we we touched on this in our seminar, just eliminating that notion of a work-life separation. That's right. Because if if they're not balanced, well, forget it. So life just needs to be balanced in general. So that's the kind of conversation we're in for as our as our going out of here. Something to think about as you depart, knowing that stress is going to come into your life. Mindfulness is a recognized medical practice that can help with this. So let's start with how, you're a golf course superintendent in Prince Edward Island, one of the great places to visit in all of the world. How did this happen to come into your life? Is this something you've always wanted to do? Or was there something that brought you to become the mindful superintendent? Well, like most superintendents, I just got on the wrong side of stress for the first half of my career. Like many of us, I just worked myself to nothing and went through a pretty heavy-duty renovation project. Kind of personal got, renovation? No, golf well, course renovation. the personal renovation came after the, the golf course renovation. <laughs> there you go. And luckily enough, I had an amazing wife, Jill, who stuck with me through yeah. all the hardship and handed me a book on mindfulness early on and kind of the healing process afterwards. And and that was about eight years ago now, and that's kind of what got it all started. And you know, it's so important because, you know, when I think about, um, I literally call it the grind that this business uh, requires. When you're in a land-based business, a land management business, plants that respond to the climate. Now, you know, in northern climates, you get that downtime. Southern climates, our brothers and sisters down here don't get that downtime. But either way, it is a relentless pace. Yeah. That grass is pre prepared all the time, for play all the time. So you wonder sometimes, this is a profession that you would imagine we would be prone to that kind of excessive work, right? Because you'd almost feel like it, it would attract a certain person that wanted to work in a particular way. So you'd almost say, would you say, from your experience in eight years and now giving talks and seminars, that, that we are somewhat prone personality type to these Definitely. kinds of stress-based disorders? Definitely. No, and I was, I was most at fault. I was a classic example. If I wasn't working way too hard, there was something wrong. Okay, so let's talk about the personal renovation. Actually, that's a pretty good segment on my own. You renovated a golf course, <laughs> not for nothing. You're a superintendent and a GM, by the way, so it's not like you sort of left a, left a stressful environment. It almost sounds like, hey man, are you actually practicing what you're preaching? But let's talk about, you, you renovated this golf course, all of us go through these periods in our lives when we know we've pushed ourselves too, too, too hard. Sometimes you get the flu. Yep. Other times, you come a little bit unglued in the emotional and mental way. We don't need to hear the gory detail, Paul. I'm really more interested in how you knew this mindfulness path was a path then for you to take. For me personally, it was one of those things that there are times in our lives when we're handed things, and as soon as you open the book or as soon as you hear a song, or you just, it just gets you somewhere and it it's resonates. just it resonates and it's something that you felt that you've been waiting for all your life Excellent. and for me mindfulness practice was that key and it wasn't the only tool I had to take care of myself physically had to get enough sleep had to eat well had to balance things out at home and That's had right. to see my kids and my wife and, and just live a life as well 
but it's the mindfulness practice that's been one of the baseline things that has kind of right. glued it together. And you've been very effective at, at writing about it, right? Mm -hmm. So talk for a minute about what the Mindful Superintendent blog on turfnet.com has meant to you. For me, it's been an outlet that allows me to, uh, again, like most of us on a golf course, we spend a lot of time thinking. And so <laughs> when these floods of ideas and, and things come in my mind, having, having the writing, having that outlet, has been wonderful, and Peter and the rest of the crew at TurfNet have just Turf been, Maestro himself. They've been just wonderful in allowing me total creative freedom to kind of write and do what right. I see fit. And again, it was my wife Jill that encouraged me to write, and she's my editor and right. producer and all okay, the rest. Okay, so at home, so you so. go through this personal crisis, you find some strategies that seem to resonate with you, you implement them in your life, you begin to see the benefits from them. You start to write about them, and lo and behold, you make a pal like Chris Trittabaugh at Hazeltine National Golf Club, a guy who I believe epitomizes, you know, epitomizes what you and I would call mindful leadership, yeah. trying to a lead a group of people towards a common goal so that everyone can do it with integrity, with dignity, caring for themselves, that we're not going to have a good golf course unless we have good people. Definitely. I have the pleasure of, of, of having a Wegmans supermarket in, in Ithaca, one of the best supermarkets chains, I think, in all of the United States. They got about 70 chains. Their motto is employees first. Yeah. Now, we talk about customer service, but I think we've learned if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not taking care of your customer. You just taught a seminar with Chris here at your very first golf industry show. Yep. How did you connect with Chris? How did the seminar go? Chris and I became friends probably about seven years ago, back when he was at Northlands, and I was just intrigued by his kind of mad scientist bent grasp stuff. That's exactly right. And Up we, at the loof. yeah, and we just became we became email friends, and then we invited him to our conference in Halifax, actually. To Probably talk about the stuff about bank the loop. Yeah, and that was that was the first time he ever spoke actually no at a conference. Key. So, so then we continued to stay in touch, and then we got to go to the Ryder Cup with you and yeah, with yeah, all yeah. the rest. And I mean, that was just what a great celebration! It was phenomenal. It's, it's one and of those experiences. If you know, when you start practicing some mindfulness, you actually experience things on a bit oh, of a yeah. different level than you're used to experiencing yeah. them, and it was a bit transformative for almost everyone involved. Oh, and, it was. You know. You saw Minnesota people acting a little bit out of character out there. They got a little bit rowdy. So you've connected with Chris. Let's talk about the seminar. What what were how did it how did you guys decide to do it and what was the what what did you actually deliver? Do you think you delivered to the people this week? Well again, it's it's just that mutual friendship and respect I think that we have for each other. We we've always kind of connected on the same plane as far as approaching what we do kind of nuts and bolts in the golf course, but what we do behind the scenes and right. treating people well and right, right, treating right. people fairly, like you said. And so we just started a conversation. And for me, I knew Chris had a message after we were at the Ryder Cup because I saw how they approached everything they did that week. And I remember flying home in the plane and writing a blog. And it was one of the best ones I ever wrote. Oh yeah, it got very popular. I and think it, my picture was, was in that blog. It was. And it it was simply the title was i finally found a mindful superintendent because chris had fun he was calm he oh was my generous God. he was thankful he was so calm he put as I, much he effort he was making me nervous he was yeah. so calm. He, they put as much effort into maintaining our experience That's as volunteers exactly as they did the turf. Well, so, he made it that great celebration yeah. in the state of minnesota what a great joy so what was the what was the seminar like so the seminar actually turned out it far exceeded my expectations. And so I kind of did the first half and I introduced mindfulness, introduced the practice. We actually, I heard you had guys meditate. We actually had 150 Yow, guys at meditating. at the industry show in Texas. I was, bunch, how many guys you had? We had about 150. Yeah. Well, I guess no one's interested in this particular issue. I don't know. I was pretty terrified when I asked them to close their eyes and breathe deep. But they did, and it was wonderful, and I okay. thanked them all. So. so the seminar seemed to have going, you know, I know what your end is. What did Chris do? Chris really did, like I said, he reflected on his workplace culture and, and tried to deal with um, the whole millennial side of things, dealing with younger staff. 
and really taking it from the standpoint that instead of standing there wagging your finger at them, that maybe we need to start thinking, we need to turn the mirror on ourselves okay. and start kind of reimagining how we approach things. Okay, so I don't need to be convinced. I have a better sense of sort of these things from my own, I think like you've been seeking them for a while. Uh, you know, my low energy level works well for the <laughs> mindfulness practice. You don't want to see what's going on inside of my head when I'm meditating. Um, but I guess people might say, you know, what is, is this the latest fad? Is it, you know, is it the latest thing that people, the, the new age version of how we're going to take care of ourselves? What would you say to somebody that said, is it just a fad or is it, will it lead to a lifelong mind, mindfulness shift? I think we live in a culture right now that is conditioned to distraction with cell phones, with television, with just the general pace of life. Then you add on what we do for a living, <laughs> which, as you mentioned earlier, there's chaos. Stress. Chaos is inevitable. Right. So really what mindfulness teaches and the practice allows us to develop alternate responses to stress. It, it doesn't mean stress disappears. It doesn't mean it goes away. Right. But how we respond to it, right. instead of always reacting to right. it, makes and a big difference. And you know, difference. like I'm thinking about it, I think about my own life, right? Uh, traveling, anytime you got to travel, you know, you yep. always know this is going to be likely something to happen. Well, I'm staring at snow tomorrow. Yep. And I can tell you, in general, I would be really anxious about this and be thinking, oh, you know, the change. Now, it's not going to change it at all. I like the movie, The Bridge of Spies, when the, the, guy, the guy who gets, the spy that gets caught, uh, keep, you know, Tom Hanks is the lawyer representing him. He goes, you know, aren't you worried? He goes, would it help? <laughs> exactly. You know, is it, is it going to help to worry? So, so clearly, stress is in our lives. Yeah. There's ways of sort of medicating yourself around it a little bit. There's a lot of ways of dealing with these things. But it seems like mindfulness practice is focused on slowing it down a little bit. Yep. That doesn't sound like a fad because no. it's in t I'm not taking anything. Nope. I'm not taking anything. I'm sitting quiet. It's free. I'm, it's free. <laughs> the best, that's the best part about it. So we got about three minutes left. Yep. You've convinced me it's not a fad. You've obviously been at it for eight years, of course. The thing I think we want to make sure we dispel is this isn't tied to religion. No. It's not a religious practice. I think sometimes people think, oh, is it Buddhist? Oh, is it Zen? Oh, is it this? What I've known from, and you would probably attest to, when John Kabat-Zinn wrote that book, you know, a full, a full, full catastrophe, living. full, full yeah. catastrophe living, you know, he was saying, look at these thousand-year-old cultures. Yes, it's based in religion. There's a mindfulness that connects to spirituality, but we're actually talking about something that medical research has yeah. proven to be effective. We're not talking about so the FDA. You know, you don't see the statement at the bottom. It is the FDA hasn't approved these things or tested these claims. There's data that's showing these things are resulting in big changes in yeah. people's lives. So, you know, I, I will just say for you, it doesn't seem like it's a fad. It seems like it's a relatively available practice. The last couple of minutes, what's next for the Mindful Superintendent Project? Well, the next... Great seminar, successful blog, you know... Life's not perfect. We're still doing stress. We're still yep. doing the things we're doing. The last time I checked, you still got bills to pay. Yep. You're still the superintendent and general manager at Fox Meadow. What are you imagining could come of what you're starting to see to be maybe a movement? I guess what I'd like to see is just the conversation growing, really, and just allowing, creating something that gives superintendents and assistant superintendents, and anyone else in the industry, just a place to chat and a place to talk about things. And, and if we can train people in mindful awareness and if we can train people in learning how to take care of themselves physically and, and making making sure that we're taking care of ourselves as well as we take care of our greens and, and stuff like that. So There could be an exciting announcement coming shortly about some efforts that we uh, are concocting. We're not prepared to release them live here on TV at the golf industry show, but there's some work behind the scenes going on that yep. I think a lot of us are, are excited about. Um, I do think as we leave and wrap up for the time, leaving people with some simple strategies. What would you tell somebody if they heard this, they're experiencing stress night right now, where can they start right now? The best thing you can do is talk to someone. That's, that's really the, the best advice I can give someone right off the bat. And don't think for one second that because you're suffering, you're suffering alone. 
That's right. I guarantee if you walked around this trade show floor today. Somebody's having a hard time. There would be a quarter of the people here that would feel the having same way you time. would. And yeah. So I think just taking that first step and opening up yeah. and being a bit vulnerable. And when and the word gets out that you had 150 guys closing their eyes, focusing on their breath, this, this could be the biggest thing to happen in a long time. Hopefully. Great to see you, Paul. Safe Thanks, trips Frank. back to Prince Edward Island. Thank you. I am Frank Rossi to finally wrap up this show here, young ladies. Good to see you. Thank you very much to the staff and crew at Epic Creative. Jim, who's been putting up with me, giving him a hard time the whole, the whole couple of days. I'm Frank Rossi. We're wrapping up our GCSA Live TV brought to you by Lebanon Turf here at the 2018 Golf Industry Show. We'll see you next year in San Diego. Safe travels home, everyone. See you later.